outside of the tropics, I have probably got... Don't you love it when your audio doesn't work and you're just stuck with the onboard camera? I was thinking about trying to edit this video so you couldn't hear the background noise too much, but it just didn't happen. So you guys are getting a nice background from me. Now, overwintering tomatoes is basically as it sounds. Trying to grow tomatoes throughout winter so you can get crop throughout the entire year. And I probably have one of the best climates around, minus somewhere like the tropics. If you compare me to somewhere like America, we have a very similar climate to San Francisco. So theoretically, we can grow them all year round. And I have grown them all year round, but there is a big problem with it. Basically, they stop producing fruit. You'll get lots of leafy greens, you'll get lots of growth going through it, but the actual fruit itself won't ripen up. So basically what I do this time of year, I should have done it a while ago, but it's time to rip them all out. Now this time, probably about six months ago, I had these plants and they were producing so much fruit. Have a look through some of my older videos and you'll just see how much they were actually producing, which is insane. But now, it's probably been about four weeks since I've actually gotten any fruit off these plants. Now, they might continue growing through till next year, but I find that they seem to start picking up diseases and dying off. And it's basically a waste of space at the moment. There's room there that I could be planting so many nicer, better things that will be growing very well this time of year, but they just pretty much won't. So, it's time to rip it all out and then replant with something new. Now there are some tomato varieties that have been bred for colder climates and might be able to do a little bit better over winter. There's things like Siberian tomatoes and a couple other varieties like that, but I found that I do have some here that are still growing and they're still floating and they're still putting it out, but they're just incredibly slow compared to the other varieties that I can, the other things that I could potentially grow. For example, these ones here are a slightly better one than the other ones that I've been getting there. It's probably growing the best out of all of them. But these ones have been ripening for probably about a month now, and that's still how they're looking. And there's all the tomato scraps that are just gonna go off to the chickens. I'm sure they'll quite happily pick through it and take out all the green stuff. Now, I like to give the bed a little bit of a going over and just making it ready for the next lot of stuff going in. It's nothing major, but I just usually like to give it a bit of a scrape over and move all the rocks around and just makes it a little bit prettier. I don't know if it does anything particular, but I like doing it. And this is what I'm replacing it with. This is my little seeding bed. It's basically a mixture of peat core and vermiculite and that sort of stuff that I sprinkle seeds in. It waters itself three times a day and everything just grows and comes up a hell of a lot easier in here than it would naturally in the beds. So what I've got here is a mixture of baby spinach. I've got some cabbage, I've got some snow peas, some onions, some lettuce, some pretty much a hell of a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna pull up a lot of this stuff and then plant it into the new bed because they grow a hell of a lot better than the tomatoes with this time of year because they're basically ready for it. They just do a hell of a lot better. And with the aquaponics, the only trick that I've really learned is when you plant stuff, make sure that the rocks are wet that you put them into. That's pretty much it. So I make a little trough. I find it's a little bit quicker and easier to make a trough and then plant, drop all the plants in there and just cover them with rocks again so they're pointing up. And it usually has about a 95% success rate with it since it just works quite well. And I love aquaponics, so it's so much easier than any other method. And now it's time for the cabbage, which comes out quite easily. And I'm sure you, some of you quite wily people are gonna notice that I have planted way too much of both of these and it's all gonna be ripe at about the same time. But it doesn't bother me too much since I'll take some of it to work, I'll give some of it away and there's not that much more that I can do this time of year. Cause by the time these guys are ready, then hopefully it should be about the right time to stick the tomatoes in for next season, which is what I'm looking forward to. So that's pretty much my opinion on this. Now, if you guys are curious about my climate in comparison to America, we are very similar to San Francisco, apparently. Well, according to the internet, we are very similar to San Francisco. So I'm gonna let these guys grow and then I might actually get something decent out of these beds instead of letting them go for the next year when they just won't grow great next year if I let them keep on going through. So that is about it for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.